الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبا القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء أما بعد respected scholars, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'd like to welcome everyone in celebrating this holy month of Ramadan and like to wish everyone a Ramadan Mubarak insha'Allah for the beginning of this holy month, this month of mercy, this month of reward, this month of blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which he has granted for us. And in saying that, inshallah, tonight's speech and the upcoming speeches will be based on the preparation for this holy month of Ramadan, inshallah. Tonight, especially, I want to look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the opportunity has given us in order to come towards the message of Ahl al-Bayt, to come towards the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to go towards the door of repentance, to the door of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, tonight in particular, I want to focus on the idea of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in three particular points or faculties that we want to look at. The first and foremost, we want to look at Allah's mercy in an aspect where we can give examples because we cannot comprehend Allah's mercy nor can we comprehend his adala but we can look into it from our particular perspective so we'd like to look at Allah's mercy in particular analogies then we want to look at it when we look at our imams especially the imam that will be martyred in this holy month of Ramadan Imam Ali Ibn Abi Talib and the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had in this particular hujjah on this earth and see how we can relate this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his mirror images on earth and then in the final occasion inshallah and to wrap everything together and to prepare ourselves we'd like to look at how we can take this mercy and apply it in the holy month of Ramadan so please help me in starting the topic of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with one of your loudest salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allah's mercy is a very complex idea to come across because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's many levels of his mercy. There's mercy in particular beings, there's mercy on particular acts. There's mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in which we have a, a narration that says everything that you have now, every mercy that Allah has blessed you with, whether it be your eyesight, whether it be your hands, any senses, the gifts that Allah has given you, the blessings you have around you is only 1%. Everything you have on earth. The narration says it's 1%. And he says he's left 99 for the day of judgment. That there's another narration that says that even when Iblis sees how merciful Allah is on the day of judgment, he begins to think to himself, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me. That's how much mercy Allah will show on the day of judgment. But let's look at Allah's mercy in particular analogies. When the NBA are trying to be shown Allah's mercy, there's an analogy that's given to show them in a very close perspective of how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And this is the example of the boy, his mother, and an illegitimate relationship. Allah tells his prophet, he says to him, you want to see my mercy? He says, yes. He says, go and look at what's about to happen. The story goes is that a man was in blind love with a particular woman. And the mother would not have them be married. So he goes to the woman and he says, what can I do to be with you? And the woman, look at what she replies. And this is why lustful relationships is very devastating towards society. The woman replies by saying, go and kill your mother. And I want your mother's beating heart brought to me. Only then will I be with you. Can you imagine? The mercy of a mother. 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries to show us the mercy that he has in relation to a mother. Why? Because it's unconditional love. When we look at the mother, why do we say that the mother is the embodiment of love, the embodiment of mercy? Because the mother, and we stated this when we looked at the rights of the mother, the mother has unconditional love in which she is prepared to be thirsty as long as you drink, as long as you are quenched. The mother is happy and sufficed to be hungry as long as you eat. She will stay up the night as long as she sees you sleep. She will remain bare as long as you are clothed. And this is all from the rights of Imam Zain al-Abidin in which he says to the words, the right of the mother, trying to give you a closer analogy. Then we look, that boy goes towards his mother. He's in blind love. He goes towards his mother, he kills his mother. He takes her heart and he goes towards the top of that hill. On the way, look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the way, he trips, he falls. The heart falls out of his hand. Allah gives the ability to the heart to speak. What does the heart of the mother say? He says, my beloved or my dear son, are you okay? The boy's just killed his mother. Allah has given the ability for the heart to speak. And the heart, what does it say? Are you hurt, my son? Allah then says what to his prophet? He says, bear witness that my mercy and my love towards my creation is greater than this love and mercy for this mother for her son. How many folds? There's a notion that says 70 times more. There's a notion that says 100 times more. But imagine the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reference to his ibad, to me and you. That's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is asked, he says, when can I return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And we can remember this because this is the month of mercy. This is the month that Allah has given us the opportunity to return back to him. He says, when is it that we can repent and go towards you, O Allah? And the prophets ask this. The prophet, what does he state? He says, you can return back to Allah and repent. He says, one year before you die, one year before you die, if you repent, Allah will accept your repentance. And then he pauses because he knows the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He pauses and he says, no, it's not one year. He says, it's one month. He pauses again. He says, no, not one month. He says, one week. Then he goes on to say, one day. And then the longest pauses were the last ones as it gets closer and closer to the idea of mercy of Allah. He pauses and he says, if it's one hour, then he says, if it's one minute, then he goes on to say what? He says, if the angel of death is standing at your footsteps and you begin to see the gardens of heaven and the pits of hell, he says, then if you go towards Allah sincerely, isn't it? وَإِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُومِ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَئِذِينَ You begin to see the gardens of heaven and the pits of hellfire. The Prophet says, then, if you repent sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will forgive you. And this is the mercy of Allah. We see it in an everyday situation, but we do not pay attention to it. What's the greatest example of Allah's mercy? Is the faculty that is given us between sin and reward. If we look at it in depth, if we look at a sin, how many does Allah write for us as a sin when we sin? One sin, isn't it? When we sin, it's one. When we do an act of worship, how many does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us? Ten rewards. That in itself is on Allah's mercy, but we don't look at it. It goes further than this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told that if you think about sinning, if you think your intention is there to sin, however, or whether it be intentionally or unintentionally, that you do not commit that sin. Remember, you thought about it. You didn't commit that sin. What does Allah write? He writes one hasana. That's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he goes further. He goes, even when you do betray me, even when you do commit the sin, look at the mercy of Allah. He says, I have given authority on the right angel over the left angel. What's the authority? He says, when you commit a sin, 
He says, I've given authority to the right angel to stop the left angel to write it straight away. Because when you do a reward, when you do a good deed, he writes it straight away. However, when you sin, the right angel tells the left angel, he says, wait. One hour goes by, he says, wait. Another hour, until seven hours go past. He says, if you repent within that seven hours, he won't write it. However, after the seven hours, the left angel will look at the right and says, can I write it? He says, now you may write it. So he gives us an opportunity to repent towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is all in a level that we know, but we didn't look at in depth in the idea or in the faculty of Allah's mercy. But it's something to look at. It's something to analyze, especially in the month of mercy in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has multiplied the rewards, has multiplied the recitation of the Quran, has multiplied even your breathing, even your sleeping in the month of Ramadan is ibadah. Imagine if you actually do ibadah. Imagine if you stay at the nights. Imagine what reward you get on the day of Layal al-Qadr, on the night of Layal al-Qadr. Imagine what Allah has ready for you in this holy month, only if you go out and take it. Because you are given the opportunity. It's like this person that said, he fell off a boat. It's a, quite a funny analogy, actually. He falls off a boat and he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save me. He's fallen off the boat and he's waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he believed that he has faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he falls off and he waits. He says, Allah will rescue me. So the first boat comes by and he stops. He says, hop on. You look like you're struggling. He says, no, 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 no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save me. So that boat goes by. The second boat comes. He says, hop on. You're struggling. He says, no, 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 no. I don't need your boat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save me. And the third boat comes past and the same thing happens. Eventually this person dies. He comes on the day of judgment and he says, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells him, well, what's happened? You know, I wanted you to save me. And Allah says, well, haven't I, didn't I send three ships towards you in which you can hop on board? Now, the idea is not that the person didn't believe in Allah, but he did not read the signs of Allah. When Allah gives us an opportunity, you come one step towards him, Allah will come ten steps. You go one step away, what do you think will happen? If you go from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but if you remember him, subhanallah, he will come towards you and the blessings you will not even see. As a revert, one of the reverts that I've heard comes from a different religion. We have Islam, we're born into Islam, we're given this beautiful, beautiful message, spoon-fed to us. Imagine a revert that had to struggle to come towards this message. This revert, look at the way he came towards Islam. Look at the way he came towards Islam. He says, I believed in Islam completely. He says, I understood Islam. I went and I read and I researched and I came to a complete state of salvation. That yes, this is the right path. Islam is the right religion. He says, but I was looking for a sign. I wanted something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his merciful grace to show me, to lead me. You know when sometimes we're down and we just want something to pick us up again. Something, some kind of sign. Something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This revert had the same idea as you and I. He says, for three nights in Ramadan. He says, in three nights in Ramadan, he says, I opened the Quran. Obviously, he couldn't read Arabic at the time, so he had the transliteration. He says, I wanted to read something. I wanted something to start to come and submit towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, I created an atmosphere. He says, I let the lights off. I opened the candles, I opened the windows, I was waiting for it. It says the first night, I was waiting for a sign from Allah. It says nothing happened. It says the second night, I was waiting for a sign from Allah. It says nothing happened. It says the third night, I was waiting, I was ready. He says everything was ready. He said, I was looking for the smallest of signs. He says a small sound, the wind gushing. He says anything. He says, the blinds moving. He says, anything at all, I'll take as a sign. Doesn't matter. He says, nothing, nothing moved. No sound was there. It was completely silent. He says, well, I'm already submitted. Let me start reading the Quran. And believe, believe it or not, the first verse that he reads from the Holy Quran is the repetitive verse in the surah known as Surah Al-Rahman, in which he reads, Allah bi Allah rabbikuma. 
Which of the signs of your Lord do you deny? He says, which of the signs of your Lord do you deny? Now this person straight away, he said, I got the goosebumps. I went straight towards the mosque. He says, I want to come towards the religion right now. And in which he begins to recite the Shahada and everyone comes around at him. And imagine he says to himself, I was so taken back from the amount of people that came towards me. Little did he know that it was actually iftar at the mosque at that time. But that's for another particular story. Now, in essence, let's look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've understood that Allah is the most merciful. That we cannot grasp the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in instance, let's look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has manifested his mercy. In which are the Ahlul Bayt, Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Let's look at the person that will be martyred in the month of Ramadan. The person that brought this religion and held this religion, if it was not for his sword, if it not, not for his knowledge, if it was not for his stances, whether it be in the battlefield or in the court of law or his silence for the Khilafah. This person is the manifestation of mercy. And I say this with examples, brothers and sisters. When Ali ibn Abi Talib was struck in his sujood, when Ali ibn Abi Talib was struck in his sujood, we find that the person that struck Ali ibn Abi Talib, what did Ali ibn Abi Talib do towards him? For us, if someone hurt us by a word or looked at us in a wrong way, it's the end of the world. Ali ibn Abi Talib, this person struck him with a poisonous sword. He says, Bring him, do not hurt him, feed him, clothe him. Tell me what kind of mercy did he show Ali ibn Abi Talib. And look at what Ali ibn Abi Talib showed him in return. You really need to have to think about this particular analogy. We have to think about the stories that we hear from the Ahlul Bayt. This is the manifestation of mercy. This is the manifestation of Allah's mercy on earth. When we find that a person by the name of Sauda, which used to write poems, for the people to fight for Ali ibn Abi Talib and Safin. When she goes towards Muawiyah, she says, such and such governor of yours is not doing his job. He's doing A, B, C, D against religion. Muawiyah just dismisses her. He says, why should I even listen to you? You wrote the poems for Ali ibn Abi Talib. So she begins to cry and she says, where is Ali ibn Abi Talib? Muawiyah straight away, he looks at her, he says, why do you remember Ali? He says, I remember when I went to tell Ali ibn Abi Talib about a governor that used to just eat with the wealthy people. In which Ali ibn Abi Talib straight away went to prostration and he began to weep and ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, look at the difference between Ali and yourself. Ayna al-hasa min nujum al-sama wa ayna mu'awiyatu min Ali? He says, look at this instance, brothers and sisters. And the companions at the time knew this. When we had a, a young five-year-old, like the beautiful people we see nowadays. Five-year-old, not, not more than the, the brothers I see in front of me. A girl, five years of age, the daughter of Abu Aswad al Ali, one of the companions of Ali ibn Abi Talib. After Ali ibn Abi Talib, when Muawiyah's time, when he used to try to get Ali ibn Abi Talib's people towards him, he gave this household a bit of honey with saffron inside. You can imagine the companions of Ali ibn Abi Talib, they didn't have honey because they were a state of famine at the time, let alone the honey that had the saffron inside. So she did not know who it's from. Five years of age as the narration, five or six years of age as the narration goes. She picks it up, she sees it at the door, she opens it, she begins to eat it. Her father, Abu Aswad Du'ali, comes in and he asks her, he says, do you not know who that honey is for? So she looks at her father and she says, who's this honey for, her father? He says, this honey is from Muawiyah's camp. This is from Muawiyah. And look at how this five-year-old acts. I want the brothers especially to look at this five-year-old and how she acted in light of Ali ibn Abi Talib. She goes 
The narration says she puts her hand in the back of her throat and she'll, until she regurgitates. She vomited, she vomits all that which she just ate. So all the honey and saffron just comes out. And she goes and points towards Syria at the time, or Damascus, and she says particular lines of poetry in which she begins to talk with Muawiyah. And she says, do you try to take us away with some saffron-flavored honey? Take us away from Ali ibn Abi Talib? He says, no way will you be able to get the closest companions away from such an amazing leader. And she says this in lines of poetry, brothers and sisters. At five years of age, she begins to talk with Muawiyah in which she says what? Abil Asal al Muzafari ibn Hindin, Nabi Ulaka Iman and Wadina, Fala Wallah, Layaku Nuzak, Wamaulana, Amir al Mu'minina. Going back to the idea of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how does it apply nowadays? How does it apply nowadays? Because we have to grasp it. And I made sure to talk about the aspect of mercy before I begin to talk about Ramadan in the upcoming nights. Because first we have to prepare ourselves physically, mentally, spiritually for the month that comes ahead of us. We have to prepare ourselves in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the opportunity to stay away from number one, the food and the drink that may affect our thinking, that may affect our way of life, that may affect us in any particular way and give us a clear idea of thought. He takes us away from that which is halal and we have to stay from that which is haram, whether it be backbiting, whether it be harming oneself, whether it be drinking or eating that which is haram. We are away from all of that and we have to behave ourselves as a certain guidelines we have to abide by Allah is trying to teach us. Allah is trying to put us onto this particular path. Let's use this time. But first, we have to put ourselves into the mindset of Islam. We have to put ourselves in the mindset that is Ramadan by first and foremost having the idea of where we want to be at the end of Ramadan. And then step by step, we'll begin to achieve it. Step by step, we'll say to ourselves that this is what we're going to achieve this day. This is what will be achieved by half of Ramadan. This is what I will be before Layal al-Qadr hits us. And in which, at the end of Ramadan, you will begin to say to yourself that, yes, I have done that which I wanted. And inshallah, next Ramadan, I will be tenfold the person I am today. I will learn tenfold of what I know nowadays. I'll be a better person in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we pray to Allah on this Closing line, inshallah, and inshallah in the upcoming nights, we'd like to decipher and go into detail about the month of Ramadan. How did fasting come about? What is the benefits of fasting? Or from the Imams, from a scientific perspective, from Tabi al we'd like to look at it in a more detailed manner, not just in a stereotypical, very kind of surface level in which we usually look at it. We want to go in depth and look at Ramadan in its essence. Ramadan, the month of mercy. Ramadan, the opportunity that Allah has given us and how we can grasp that opportunity the best we can. And inshallah, we pray to Allah on this note that he gives us the opportunity to better ourselves during this month of Ramadan, to elevate us in both knowledge, spirituality, and closeness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah with a surah al-mubarakat al-fatiha, but before it, three of your loudest salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.